every opening has a line, a geometry designed for a reason, right? That's the God's eye view, simple part of looking at stealth. You know it's about lines that would, would reflect radar energy. It goes from the inlets. It goes from the engine that you can't see that's buried inside there. It goes from the weapons that are hid inside those weapon bay doors, one on each side. They hold two 2,000 pound bombs, so one 2,000 pound bomb on each side, and then a radar guided missile on each side. So the bombs are hung in there, right? The fuel, there are no external fuel tanks. It's all inside the airplane. That holds more than 18,000 pounds of gas in it. That's more than a CF 18 with three external fuel tanks, okay? All of that's hidden inside the, in the, in, inside the airplane. So you don't get radar energy pushed back from pylons that hold external fuel tanks or pylons that hold missiles or bombs. You don't see an external electro optical pod like the sniper pods and the CF 18s hanging from that. That's in the, you saw it this morning, the EOTS fa uh, glass faceted window up front. Everything about this jet has stealth from start to finish. It's the third major airplane that Lockheed Martin has built that's stealthy from the F-117 to the F-22 to the F-35. When we have the conversation about maintaining stealth over its lifetime, we learned. We learned because the F-117 was only stealthy when it was in perfect working order and it actually had to be gooped up before it ever went out on real missions. We have we morphed that. Oh, by the way, it wasn't a very maneuverable jet, right? Because it had sharp lines, basically flew like an A7, not maneuverable at all. Because we didn't know how to build a stealthy airplane that could be maneuverable at the same time. We morphed that into the F-22. So the F-22 now is a highly maneuverable airplane. It's, it's a stealthy airplane. But then we have the conversation, even with it, how do you maintain stealth over a lifetime? Every time you open a panel on those older airplanes and you close them, you contaminate stealth. So here's how intricate it is. If you don't cover every bolt that you see on there, and you don't perfectly close every panel, you've taken away in measurable amounts the stealthiness of this airplane. From, now it's not invisible, but the, it's so hard to see that by the time you think you can detect it, it's come and gone. So when I get to maintaining stealth, we've learned how to do seams and close panels and how to work those so that it, when you chip them, when you nick them, when you scratch them, we can restore that. And we've put millions of dollars into the development of understanding that this has to be stealthy over a lifetime. And if you think it's harsh in Canada in the winter, imagine being on an aircraft carrier where there is no space and there's lots of big guys with lots of machinery and you're going to ding stuff, okay? That's the environment we have to worry about. That's the harshest environment. And us as land-based operators, we're going to have a much easier time of maintaining stealth. And oh, by the way, when someone tells me it can't go fast, we have been to 1.6 ma, 700 knots, maximum G, which is 9G in this jet, full of bombs, full of missiles, full of gas. Okay? We've, we've oversped the airplane. We have over g the airplane at the very end points. So there's the conversation about fast enough. Okay, can you go far enough?